Good afternoon everyone. Once again, this is Fred Alvin Gitamondok, isang Bishop Delegated Roman Catholic Apologist to share to you the doctrines of the Catholic Church. Happy Lord's Day sa lahat. Nawag pa lang araw ng linggo sa ating lahat mga Katoliko at hindi Katoliko. Sana lahat kayo dyan ay nasa mabuting kalagayan. Ang ishare ko ngayon this afternoon is about a little commentary doon sa mga nakaraan kong mga international debates against foreigners doon sa uh, taga Amerika, isang Amerikano he belongs to the black uh, black Hebrew Israelite movement, yun ang tawag nila sa grupo nila ISUPK yung si Captain Tasaryak Yawahada uh, Israelite School of Practical Knowledge sa kayong si Brad ang kaibigan natin na Nigerian from Africa na si Brad Adamo Abu Bakar Abu Kari from Nigeria, Africa kasi common naman yung topic namin sa Muslim at sa uh, Black Hebrew Israelite na si Tasaryak the topic as you have uh, seen in my Facebook walls is about the divinity of God, no? pagka Diyos si Kristo. In their side, sa mga membro nila sa kanilang kongregasyon, they claim that they won the debate. Pero kung titignan nyo talaga, maraming beses na ipit ko ang mga kalaban natin. Una yung si Tasaryak. No? Let's discuss about uh, my debate with uh, Black American Israel, Hebrew Israelite hindi ko maano to ma <laughs> hindi ko maintindihan tong grupo nila paano naging uh, Hebrew Israelite sila eh wala naman sila genealogy na ang mga kanununuan nila ay galing sa Israel sa bansang Israel ngayon sa Middle East eh mga Amerikano to eh mga Black Americans, mga Negro doon na sila sa Amerika Uh, isinilang, doon na sila lumaki tapos bigla lang they converted to this uh, religion na uh, founded by only by black Americans in the late 1800s na tinatawag sa Amerika na uh, black Hebrew Israelite movement black Hebrew Israelite movement tapos pala yung aral nila eh, nagkawatak-watak din pala sila mga, marami sila mga sekta at mga denominasyon and they also operate like a cult no? na kita ko sa internet they are also branded as a hate group Baga they hate the white people the white race they regard the uh, white people as the descendants of Edom so sila daw descendants ni Jacob or Israel natunay ng mga Israelita tapos naman yung mga puti daw mga Caucasian race lalo na mga white Americans they brand them as the descendant of Edom or Esau <laughs> kaya yun ang ibig sabihin nila ng mga Gentiles now back again sa topic na minibad na sa Riyak Yawahada ng ISUPK na napatunayan ko last 3 uh, days ago yung debate namin today Sunday mga uh, Wednesday yun ng umaga so 5 uh, days ago Patunayan ko naman si Kristo talaga ay tunay na Diyos ayon sa Biblia. No? A very clear verse that I have quoted in my uh, presentation is that uh, Jesus is also true God like the Father as Jesus claimed Himself in John 17.3, comma 5 and comma 11, King James Version 16.11 and 1 John chapter 5 verse 20. The Catholic Epistle of Saint John the Apostle, chapter 5, verse 20. So let's read John 17, verse 3, comma 5, comma 11. And this is eternal life to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It is very clear here. Eternal life means God the Father, and the true God is also God the Father, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Jesus Christ is. As one with the Father, John 10.30, Jesus claims, I and my Father are one. Which means that when He says that the Father 
is eternal life, and then He is also eternal life because Christ affirmed that He is the resurrection and the life. John 11, 25, 26. And He is the eternal life also. First John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, comma 20. So He is also eternal life here in John 17, 3. Just as the God the Father is eternal life, so also God the Son is eternal life. Because being God or true God is equated to eternal life, or eternal life is the true God Himself. And this is eternal life. So eternal life is, comma, to know you, meaning the Father. So eternal life also includes Jesus. Eternal life you, comma, Father, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Jesus Christ is uh, part here of the cross. This is eternal life. So <laughs> Mr. Tasarek Yawada of America has failed to I disprove this verse and to negate this. In verse, preceding verse below, I have Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have completed the task you gave me to do. Verse 5, Now glorify me, Father, with your own glory which I had in your presence before the world existed. So Christ even commands the Father to glorify Him, the Son. How? With the glory that the Son shared with the Father in the presence of the Father even before the world existed or the earth existed. So, what is His state or His nature when the world is not yet in existence? Of course, He is not mere man because if He is mere man, where would He be when the world or the earth is not yet there? Meaning, nakalutang rong ba si Kristo? Saan siya kukuha ng pagkain na kung tao lang siya? No? O propeta lang. Saan siya matutulog? Saan siya titira? Kung wala pang mundo. So, that does not make sense. If he's not true God and has a divine nature or divinity, which is shared with the glory of the Father. John 17, 3-5. to Now, in verse 11, he says that he and the Father are one. My presence in the world is over. But these are in the world where I am coming to you. Holy Father, Preserve in your name those whom you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So, Mr. Tasariak uh, said that, so Brother Alvin, in our cross-examination, he crossed me. Does that mean that if the Father is one with the Son, then the Son is also God because He is one with the Father? So how about John 17, 11, John 17, 21 to 22 below? Would that mean that uh, since Christ said that they may be one with us, meaning the church, the people, the congregation is one with the Father and the Son, so the congregation now becomes many God, many gods aside from the Father? No, it doesn't mean so because we don't have a divine nature. We are not divine. We are not gods. We are only humans. We are creatures. Well, the Son is not a creature before the foundation of the world. When he is still God, he is not man yet during time, his pre-existence. He became man when he uh, came to earth and was born from the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Luke 1, 30-35. Lucas 1, 35 Matthew 1, 21 etc. So before the foundation of the world, his being one with the Father is in his, in his divine nature, and he is his divinity, he is God himself, because he shares the glory of the divine nature and the divinity of the Father, John 17, 3, comma 5. So when he says that they may be united with us, meaning united in purpose, united not in being God, but united as a people of God, on which Jesus is the head, Colossians 1, 18. Christ is the head of his body, which is no other than the church, Colossians 1, 18, Ephesians 1, 22 to 23. And many verses in the Bible, Colossians 2.10. Now, it is very clear that Jesus affirms that He is true God with the Father and also eternal life. John 17, verse 3, read the Bible, Catholic or Protestant, comma 5, and then comma 11. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. By the way, Alethinos Theos is there in the Greek in John 17.3. He also used this a word by St. John because John wrote the Gospel of John also in his commentary in his Epistola Catholica at Sancti Juan Jacobi 
Epistola Katolik al Sancti Juani Apostolic, 1 John chapter 2, verse chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us insight to know the true one. Who is this true one? The Father alone know. Very clear in the context. And we are in union with the true one. Kama. Who is this true one? Kama. And we are in union with the true one. Kama. With His Son, Jesus Christ. In the King James Version 1611, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. So also, the true one is the Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, without Kama, without period in the original Greek, is Alithinus Theos and Ionius Zoe or Zoe Ionius eternal life and true God He is the true God and eternal life this is a very clear verse now Brantasarek Yawada of the Black Hebrew Israelite Movement ISUPK fails to negate and to uh, debunk or refute the clear meaning of the verse 1st John chapter 5 verse 20 because up here eternal life is in the sun 1st John 5 11 to 13 and this is the evidence God has granted us eternal life who who is this God of other and this life is in his hand so the father God the father has granted eternal life to us the church his children and where is this eternal life through the Son. And this life is in His Son. He who was the Son has that life, meaning has that eternal life. He who does not have the Son of God, meaning Jesus, does not have that life. I am writing this to you who believe in the name of God's Son, in order that you may know that you have eternal life. So eternal life here in verse 20, and through God, Alethenus Theos, and Zoe Ionius, refers to the Son Jesus Christ. With the Son Jesus Christ, the true one, he is the true God and eternal life, 1 John 5.20. So, it is very clear that I demolished Mr. Stasariak in our debate. Now, in our cross-examination, I got him trapped with a dilemma question based on uh, John 10.30 and John 5.18. Because I asked him a question and he was really trapped and put on a dilemma. In John 10, 30, verse 36 to 39, Branta Sariak, Yawada of ISUPK, Black Hebrews Lalite Movement. Did not Christ affirm that He is one with the Father? Yes or no? He answered, yes, but it only means that Jesus affirmed that He is the Son of God, not God Himself. He quoted verse 36, Do you say to the one whom the Father dedicated and sent unto the word, You blaspheme, because I said, I am God's Son. So his Tassaria claims that Jesus was only claiming, I am God's Son. I am only the Son of God. I am not God the Son or God like the Father. Wrong! Because Jesus and the apostles and all the Jews around him during that time, all the people in their society, the Jewish society, during the time of Christ and the apostles, we're all the same and have the common thought and idea that anybody, anyone who claims to be God's son is equating himself with the person of God the Father. He made himself ma God, although he is man, he made himself God. And then if he claims to be God's son, claiming God as his father or God the Father, his own very father, by nature, then he is like God or equivalent or equal to God himself. That is what is taught in John 10, 33 to 36. Let us read the whole chapter from uh, verse 30, chapter 30 to verse 39. This is very crystal clear. My Father who gave them to me is mightier than all, and no one can wrest them out of my Father's son. I and the Father are one. That is very plain, simple, and categorical. Ako ang at ang aking ama, o ako ang at ang Diyos ay iisa. I and my father are one. What does this mean, are one? He claims to be God. This is what the Jews understood of Jesus' statement that I and my father are one. I and my God are one. Meaning he's also God like the father. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good deeds from the father. For which of them would you stone me? The Jews replied, we would not stone you for a good act. But for blasphemy, because you, a human being, make yourself God. You see, that is clear. The 
Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, understood what Jesus meant when he claims to be, I and my Father are one. John 10.30, Juan just dreamed that, ako at ang may isa. Ibig sabihin nun, nag-angkin si Jesus, kahit tao siya, na siya ay Diyos din tulad ng Ama. Kasi siya at ang Ama, o siya at ang Diyos, o siya at si Yahweh, ay isa. Napakaliwanag dyan, hindi ito madaling manigit, uh, just explain this away, no? And again, did you pick up stones to stone him? Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good deeds from the Father. For each of them would you stone me? The Jews replied, We would not stone you for a good act, but for blasphemy, because you, a human being, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If it calls them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say to one whom the Father dedicated and sent into the world, You bless me? Because I said, I am God's son. If I do not accomplish my Father's work, do not believe me. But if I do, then though you do, do not believe me. Believe the things I have done, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. It's very clear. Then the Jews tried again to get hold of him, but he escaped from their hands and went once more to the place beyond the Jordan, where John first had baptized, and there he stayed. Many came to him and said, Well, John did no sign, yet everything John said about this man was true, and many there believed in him. So on John 10, 13 and above, he said, not only he claims that he is God's son or God's, God's son or the son of God in John 10, 36, in verse 39 and verse 38, he uh, makes it clear to the Jews that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. So how can he not be God claiming he is God's son and he cannot also claim to be God like the Father? If he himself, he is a mere man as seen from the outside, but in nature, with him in his humanity is also the divinity and the divine nature so is really true God. That's why he can say that the Father who is in heaven, he, Jesus Christ, is also in the Father. The Son is also in the Father. And the Father, God the Father in heaven, is also in, inside him, himself, God the Son. Colossians 2.9, all of the divine nature, God places to be in the Son, in his human nature, in his humanity. Colossians 2.9, Colossians 1.19. So now, here is the clincher, <laughs> the clincher uh, question that I trap and put Tasariyak Yawahada of the Black Hebrew Israelite Movement, ASUPK. I trap him with this question in John 5.18. Let us quote the verse John 5.18. Like the Seventh-day Adventists, they would love to dismiss this verse as not affirming the divinity of Christ or his being equal to the Father. His claim to be equal with his Father by claiming he is the Son of God or his fa the fa God is his Father. So also the uh, Seventh-day Adventists when they, when you put them on a trap or a dilemma with this verse in John 5, 18, they would also explain away that this is the idea and the thought of the Jews only written by St. John the Apostle, the Evangelist. No, very wrong. Why? Because the truth of the verse is very clear, and we cannot do violence to the text, John 5.18. For this, the Jews were more eager than ever to kill him, since he not only broke the Sabbath, meaning Christ broke the Sabbath, and thus made himself, called God his own Father, and made himself equal to God. So there are two things here, the facts presented by St. John the Apostle, the Evangelist, in John 5.18. First, that Christ was breaking the Sabbath. That's, that's, that's why the Jews were planning to kill him. If this is not true that Christ himself broke the Sabbath, then why would the Jews be angry at him and wanting to kill him? No. Christ really broke the Sabbath here. This is a fact written by John because St. John the Evangelist and the Apostle is commanded by Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, to write this gospel. So Christ really broke the Sabbath and John and the Apostles know this. This is the thought or the idea or the commentary of the Jews who are angered by Christ. Because if Christ did not really broke the Sabbath, first fact, and the St. John only thought that this is what the Jews thought about Jesus and themselves, the Apostles, not breaking the Sabbath, then the Jews should have not been angered at Jesus. <laughs> if it's not a Sabbath breaker, and he keeps the Sabbath, then they would not be angry with Jesus. That is also true in John 9.16. Here, 
Dito lang sa unahan, Juan 9.16, 9.16. Some of the Pharisees then remarked, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. Others said, How can a sinful man perform such signs? So there's a disagreement among them. So, meaning, Christ did not really keep the Sabbath. Otherwise, if Christ kept the Sabbath and the apostles, John 9, 16, then Christ would simply tell the Jews and the people around him, No, I follow the Sabbath. I do not break the Sabbath. You should not be angry with me because I am a Sabbath keeper. No, Christ did not say that because he knows that he is breaking really the Sabbath of the Jews because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mark 2, 27, 28, Matthew 12, 8, etc. So here in John 5, 18, Christ is not thought to be breaking the Sabbath by the Jews because the Jews were really angry with Christ and the apostles, so which means that Christ told John the evangelist, the apostle, in John 5.18, to write this, that I broke the Sabbath together with you. Christ literally broke the Sabbath of the Jews. That's why the Jews were angry. John 5.18, let us read back. For this, the Jews were more eager than ever to kill him. So they really want to kill Jesus. Why would they want to kill Jesus and be angry with Jesus if Jesus did not really truly, literally broke the Sabbath and also with the Apostles. So this is a ma fact and a truth that Christ and the Apostles really broke the Sabbath on, John, on that context in John chapter 5, starting with verse 1 to verse 19. Since he not only broke the Sabbath, that is fact number 1, truth number 1, against Adventists, but also called God his own Father. So it is not the Jews who called God their own Father. <laughs> Dito natrap ko si Tasaryak, if you listen well to our debate, the first clause that I I asked sa Tasaryak in my last question, he was trapped. Because I asked him, John 5.18, who claimed God as his father here in John 5.18? Jesus Christ, who claimed to be God the Son, or Son of God, and then claims that God the Father, the Father is his father by nature, or the Jews around him. Uh, he was struck because the answer is it is not the Jews or anybody or even the apostles who claim that God the Father or the Father are their Father that is claiming equality with God that is claiming to be God himself claiming to God the Father to be your Father in nature meaning naturally you become God the Son or the Son of God or God the Son that is the implication and the Jews did not claim it but Jesus claims it because this is a fact stated by St. John the Evangelist and the Apostle as commanded by our Lord and Savior Jesus, the author of the Gospel of John. John chapter 5 verse 18, very clear. Also called God his own Father, meaning Jesus, and thus made himself equal to God. So it was Jesus who claims to be the, the God the Son, the Son of God, and that he is uh, God the Father is his Father. Uh, God is his father, so meaning he is equal with God because it would come out logically that he would be the son of God or God the son equal and the same nature with the father. For example, I am a human being, a human person. I have two sons. My two sons are my sons, so they are also human like me. In human nature, humanity, we are the same. All of us man, human beings here on earth have equal dignity because in our human person, human personality and our human nature and human humanity. We are all equal with each other. Even you are black, you are an American, you are Filipino, you are Chinese, you are white, you are red, etc. Whatever color. We Filipinos are brown race. We are equal in dignity because we are equal in humanity and in our human nature. That is what it means that when Jesus affirms and proclaims to the society, to the Jews in his times, with apostles around him and his disciples, Father is my Father, meaning God is my Father, meaning He claims to be God's Son naturally, and the Son of God naturally, meaning He has the same divine nature as God, because God has only one nature, it is divinity and divine nature. So as the Son of God, He comes from the Father. God the Father gave Him birth as Son, He claims to be the Son of God, John 10, 36, 39. He really claims to be equal with the Father as God, claiming to be the God the Father as His Father and He is the only begotten Son of the Father Monohenes Theos in John 1 18 then He is claiming equality with God the Father and therefore also God like the Father 
John 10.30, Anna and my father are one. So, Branta Saryak, Yawahada of Black Hebrew Israelite Movement, ISUPK, Israelite School of <coughs> Practical Knowledge, was dilemmaed. He was uh, trapped on this question. That's why when I start rebutting him during my second stand as affirmative, he was lonely. <laughs> he was uh, nakayuko na siya parang parang ang mangingiyak na eh. Kasi bantakin mo, Amerikano ka, malaki kasi pagtingin nila sa sarili nila sa Amerika. They claim they are more superior than us Filipinos. Kahit na mga edukado na Pilipino para sa kanila, kahit hindi sila edukado, basta sa Amerika sila, they are more superior than anybody, anybody of us here in the Philippines, even though we are professional. E ako UP graduate, I am a professional. Si Tasarat Yawahada in America is only a uh, It's not even a college level. <laughs> He's not educated as me. So he got hurt when I trapped him with a dilemma question based on John 5.18. Brad Tasirak, who claimed here to be the son of God, claiming that the father is his father, his own, very own father, that God the father is his own father. Therefore, he is son of God and God the son. Who? He said, Jesus. So that means Jesus was claiming equality to the father as God. is crystal clear and he was dilemma with that because his first uh, negation of that question of mine is that it is the thought of the Jews that that is not the thought of Jesus that Jesus was claiming to be God or claiming equality with the Father it's not the thought of Jesus and the Apostles but only written by John as an account of what the Jews Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Jewish people around him thought of what Jesus claims meant in John 10.30 no the claim of Jesus meant he is one with the Father as God he is one with the Father with the divine divinity and divine nature and everything that the Father has the Son also has even in power Matthew 28.18 all the power in heaven and earth is given to the Son now Tasaria went to Matthew 24.36 that the Son does not know everything For example, he doesn't know the hour of the final judgment. No, wrong. As God, he knows the hour. It does not say that God the Son or the Son of God does not know the hour. It said the Son of Man does not know. Meaning in his humanity, in his human nature, he does not know how to reveal it to his fellow man because that is his will. The will of God is to be followed. That is human will. in union and communion with the divine will that he has because he has two natures divine nature or divinity and human nature or humanity in one divine person that is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior God and King and Redeemer that is his nature so when he says the son of man does not know the hour and the day not even the angels but only the father knows which means as human being but as God in his divine nature He says simply that he knows everything. He accepts it. Uh, John chapter 21 verse 17 and Colossians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. So all the hidden knowledge of God the Father, the hidden knowledge including the hour and the day of the final judgment, the coming back of Jesus. By the way, it is Jesus Christ who will come back to just the living with the dead. And it is impossible. To think it is very illogical to think that Jesus who come will come back himself to earth to just the living dead and the final judgment doesn't know when he is going to come back. <laughs> Parang ganito, ako nag-abroad punta ng Amerika. Tapos sasabihin ko sa pamilya ko, oh, babalik din ako dyan, huwag kayo mag-alala. Tapos hindi ko alam ang kailan ako babalik. Siyempre alam ko, siguro after ng kontra ko, I'm sure I know. when the right day and time I will come back to the Philippines parang ganun yan si ang ating Panis Cristo kasi babalik na siya sa langit siyempre sinabi niya hindi mo na niya sasabihin para ang mga tao they will keep on watching the day of the hour especially in our life that we will be vigilant and we will be uh, wake up to do the commands of God have faith in God and do the works of God First John chapter 3 verse 23 this is the command that I have given you To love God, to have faith in Jesus, to believe in Jesus, 
and to love your fellow man, meaning love God and fellow man. First John chapter 3, verse 23, Epistola Catholica at San Diwari Apostoli. So which means, Jesus does not want us to know the exact day of the final judgment because, for example, if Jesus would say, uh, Brad Alvin, the uh, exact day and hour that I would return will be in the year 2025, December 25, 2025. And this is still year 2023. So I'll, I'll keep committing sin because this is still two years far from now. <laughs> so what, what if I die any day this week or next month or this year? So I would be complacent. I would be lazy. I would not do the works of God. I would not follow the commandments of God. I would uh, compromise my faith. I would not I could, have, I could also be an artist for the meantime and then later on when December 25, 2025 comes I'll be converting back to Christianity and be a good Christian and repent of my sins. <laughs> that is not the way of to salvation and holiness. So that is clear. The Son of Man, Jesus as Son of Man, as Man in His humanity and human nature did not reveal the day of the hour. But in his divinity, in his divine person as God, all the riches of the knowledge and the hidden mysteries of God the Father, Colossians 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, Colossians 2, 1, talatang 1, 2, 3, nakatago kay Kristo. So pati yung nakatago na pecha ng pagbabalik ng anak ng Diyos para maghukom sa sanlibutan in the final judgment to judge the living the dead, to Timothy 4, 2, is also hidden in the mind of Christ. Hindi lang ipinasabi sa tao. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Hindi talaga literal na talagang God the Son or the Son of God, Jesus, does not know the hour because He really knows the hour because He's the one who will return and come back. <laughs> it is illogical to not know the hour and then you are the one who will come back and you do not know when you will come back. That is a fallacy that is illogical. So very clear. Now, I trapped Him. No, so, talong-talo talaga si Tarsariak. No? Hindi madali makipagdabati in English because you have to organize your knowledge and your statements should be uh, clear, should be articulate. So, international debate cannot, is not for every Filipino, no? not even for every CFD in the Philippines. It is only for people like me who are gifted with the knowledge of English. I'm gifted to read Hebrew, Aramaic. I can also read Hebrew and Aramaic, understand a little. And then, a Greek, I can read Greek. Kaya, I read First John chapter 5, verse 20. It is written there in Greek as it is in John 17.3. The word, alethinos theos. True God, alethinos, true. True equals alethinos in Greek. And then, theos, God. God in English, theos in Greek. Alethinos theos in is letter by letter, literally, refers to Jesus Christ in First John 5.20. Unang Juan 5.20 Epistola Katolika Ad Sancti Juani Apostoli Unang Juan 5.20 Napakaliwanag dyan sa Greek And Zui Ayunios Zui meaning life Ayunios meaning eternal Eternal life So eternal life is the Father Dyan 17.3 Eternal life is the Son Dyan 17.3 So true God Alethenos Theos Is Jesus Christ First John 5.20 Is also Jesus Christ And the Father In John 17.3 Alethenos Theos True God so it's very clear, there are many still verses that claims that Jesus is true God. Like, for example, uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 1, comma 5. In the King James Version, Roma, Kapitulo 9, Talatang 1. Hindi nagsisungal na lang dito si San Pablo sa kanyang sulat sa Taga-Roma tungkol kay Kristo, kung sino si Kristo. Who is God according to St. Paul, the great apostle to the Gentiles who does not lie? Romans 11, 14. In Romans 9, 1, comma 5, St. Paul says, in Christ, I tell the truth. I am not falsifying as my conscience. Fortified by the Holy Spirit bears me witness. So, St. Paul in Romans chapter 9, in his letter to the Church of Rome, chapter 9, verse 1, comma 5, he is speaking truth. He is not lying. And he is even having the Holy Spirit as his witness. Bears with him in his conscience. In verse 5, St. Paul claims about what his knowledge of who Christ is. According to St. Paul, who is Jesus Christ? Very crystal clear. He is not lying. Romans 9.1. In verse 5, Romans 9.1, 5. Theirs are the fathers, and from them Christ, 
was humanly descended, humanly descended, kama. Who is over all, kama? God blessed forever, amen. So Jesus Christ here, Romans 9.1, kama 5, is also the most high God because He is the God who is over all, blessed forever, amen. Amen, may amen pa si simple, Romans 9, verse 1 to 5. He's speaking the truth, meaning when He says, God is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is God, who is overall blessed forever. Amen. He's speaking the truth, meaning Jesus is true God, descended in His human ancestry as the son of David in Israel. But as divinity and divine nature, He is true God, Alethenos Theos. Alethenos, here in Romans 9.1. Truth is speaking the truth. Theos is in Romans 9.5. So Romans 9, verse 1, comma 5, in the Greek, Alethenos Theos, the true God. The God of truth, or the truth about God, the true God is no other than not only the Father and the Holy Spirit, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 9, verse 1, comma 5. First John chapter 5, verse 20. Epistola Catholica at St. Piwani Apostoli, and the Gospel and letter of St. John the Apostle and the Evangelist. John chapter 17, verse 3, comma 5, comma 11. O dito naman tayo magkomentari kay uh, Mr. Nigerian Muslim Apologist. <laughs> So, mabait naman to si Brad uh, Adamu Abu Bakar no? Adamu Abu Bakar from Nigeria, Africa but uh, sad to say I also trapped him dilemma question because I use the Quran the Quran in Surah chapter 19 uh, tells us about who Jesus was is he the son of God came from Allah the father yes Jesus is the Son of God because it is Himself, Allah or God, who gave Jesus as the Son to Mary, a gift of a Son to Mary. God, Allah, cannot possess a gift which He do not own Himself. First, uh, James chapter one verse seventeen. Anything that is good that comes from the Father is the gift of the Father. It comes from Himself. James chapter one verse seventeen, and in Surah Maryam, chapter nineteen. Verse 19 to 20. This is what is written. When she saw him, she said, I seek refuge in the compassionate God from you. Do not come near if you fear the Lord. Verse 19. Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse 19 to 20. I am only the messenger of the Lord. So Angel Gabriel said, according to the Muslims, this is Angel Gabriel. I am only the messenger of your Lord, he replied. I shall bestow upon you, I will give upon you, to you, Mar Maryam, Mary. The gift of a son endowed with purity. So this is a righteous, perfect son. This is the one Jibril because Jesus is a human being. Jibril cannot generate Jesus because Jibril is an archangel who is an angel and a spirit. Has no flesh and blood and bones. So this he bestowed and announced to Mary, to Maryam, comes from Allah, from God, meaning the son of God, the son of Allah. Bar Allah, Bar Yahweh or Ibn Allah. So this perfect son, this is a perfect human being because Allah is perfect and he gave this gift to Mary. The gift of a perfect son endowed with purity. Maryam said, she said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me and neither have I been unchaste? The angel replied, so shall it be, your Lord says, meaning Allah, God, Rabbi, this is easy for me and we shall make him a sign to people and a blessing from us. This has been decreed. So. A sign from us, from Allah. A blessing from Allah, the Son. So the Son is a sign from Allah. So mean He is also from the Holy Spirit of Allah and from the Son of Allah, from Allah the Father, the Trinity, Father, Son, or Spirit. From us, capital U.S. Us. This has been decreed. So mean this is the uh, thought of Allah and the idea of Allah that He will bear a son and give that son to bestow it as a gift to Maryam, to Mary. A perfect and righteous son, sinless, no sin, what up, nothing sinful in the personality of Jesus. Not unlike Muhammad and all the rest of the Sahabas and the wise men of Islam, their Sufis and their saints and their Ummah, their people, are all sinful. Except Jesus and Maryam. They are sinless in the Quran. Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse 19 to 20. And he is a sign and a blessing from us, from the Trinity. So, as a sign and a blessing, what does Allah means in the Quran, 
in Surah chapter 3, verse 45, it is very clear. Surah chapter 3, family of Imran, chapter 3, verse 45, it is very clear here. When the angel said, O Mary, Maryam, your Lord gives you God good news of a word from Him. Capital W, word, meaning kalimat to Allah. In Jewish thought, kalam Allah. Kalam Yahweh, kalam Yahweh. Kalimat to Allah in Islam or in Arabic. His name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, honored in this world and in the next, and one of those who are granted nearness to God. So he's near to God, meaning he is God himself because he's God the Son. He is in the right of the Father, right hand of the Father, and the bosom of the Father. That is how the scriptures uh, tells us about the position of Jesus with God. John 1 18, in the bosom of the Father. John 1 14, 18. The Word was God. The Kalimah to Allah was Allah. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. And the Word was God. And He was near to God. And He was honored in this world. So He must be venerated or worshipped as God in this world. As the Word of God. And the uh, Ruwak Allah, the Spirit of God. And it's near to God. He is to be honored and venerated in this world. And in the next, and one those who are granted nearness to God. And He shall speak to men in His cradle. You see? Jesus in the Quran in verse 46, Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 46. He will even speak in his childhood, in his cradle, meaning he is still an infant. He can speak. Only God can do that. Lord, she said, how can I have a third as child when no man has touched me? The angel replied, thus it is. God creates what he wills. When he was a thing, he need only say be, and it is. Meaning the humanity of Christ will be created and produced, be made by Allah. And God will instruct him in the book, and in wisdom, and in the Torah, and in the gospel. Yes, he is the wisdom of God himself in 1 Corinthians 1.24. Because he is the word of Allah, the kalimat of Allah. So meaning, he is the word of Allah. He comes from the thought of Allah, the mind of Allah. So it is the son of God, the word of Allah, the kalimat of Allah. The Ibn Yahweh, the son of Yahweh. The Bar Yahweh, and the Ibn Allah, the son of Allah. And in the Torah, and in the gospel. He will make him a messenger to the children of Israel. As a human being, he's a messenger and a prophet. Yes, in his humanity, he will say, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. So I have come to you with a sign from the, your Lord, meaning he has uh, the divinity himself, the sign and the mark na toto talaga, siya talaga ay Diyos sa kanyang mga gawa. Yun ang kanyang mga tanda. I will make the shape of a bird. Itong tanda niya, he's a creator. Manla lang siya, manlilika, he's a creator. God, I will make the shape of a bird out of clay for you and then breath into it and by God's leave it will become a living bird and by God's leave I will heal the blind you see the words of God mga tanda ng just the sign of Allah the leper and bring the dead to life so he is the eternal life in John 17 3 he is Ionios Zoe eternal life and also Alithinos Teus John 17 3 1 John chapter 5 verse 20 John 11 25 26 and many verses in the Bible 1 John 5 11 to 13 etc I will tell you what to eat and what to store up in your home. So he is the law giver. He tells the Muslims and all of the world what to eat and what not to eat because so he is God. Surely in this there is a sign for you. If you are believers, I come to fulfill the prediction of the Torah which preceded me and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. And I come to you with a sign from your Lord. So fear God and obey me. So meaning, matakot kayo sa akin na Diyos, ngayon yung Rabbi, your Lord. And obey me, sundin niyo ako. So it's really claiming to be God. Surah 3, verse 45. Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 45 to uh, verse 49. In the Holy Quran. No? And repeat then in Surah chapter 4, verse 171. And again, Surah 19, verse 19 to 21. He is not only the word of Allah, kalimat wa Allah, the kalam Yahweh. He is also the bar Yahweh, the son of Yahweh, the son of Allah, ibn Allah or the Son of God. Also God Himself claiming to be equal with the Father. John 5.18, John 10.30-33, 1 John 5.20, and many verses in the Bible. So I have trapped and given the dilemma question to uh, a Muslim apologist, Brad Adam Abu Bakari. You have seen it in my debate, international debate. And clearly, I won that debate, and they lost the debate. <laughs> because Christ is here is to be glorified, not Brad Alvin. And these people are debating with Brad Alvin Gitamundok, Chief Roman Catholic Apologist, to debunk that Christ is not true God, which is very 
attacking the divine person of the sun imagine you attack our king and our god in heaven jesus christ i am only the defender of jesus so they cannot win anybody of them cannot win like the iglesia ni cristo the jehovah's witness so these people the black hebrew israelite movement in america isupk represented by captain tasareka wahada was demolished and lost this debate so also with muslim apologist a member of islam in nigeria africa by the person of brother adamo abu bakar abu bakari so dito lang po hanggang dito na lang shout out dyan sa mga uh, nanonood sa akin brother albert arhinkel ang topic ko brother albert is about my commentary on my uh, previous two international debates ng topic is i will be the one proving as affirmative representing the Roman Catholic Church that Jesus Christ is really true God He is true God according to the Bible and other references I commentar commentary on our debate with Brad um, Abu Bakari Adamo from Nigeria, Africa a Muslim apologist and also just five days ago with Tasar Yaki Wahada a member and a leader of the Black American Hebrew Israelite movement in America, specifically ISUPK, Israelite School of uh, Practical Knowledge. So, dito lang, hanggang dito lang tayo. Brother Chiki Gilisinao, Mariano, good afternoon, Brad, and happy Lord's Day. Ricardo para Agonos Jr. is also watching. Kel Anical is also watching. Albert Arhinkel is watching. Jan Paulo Cruz, shout out, Brad. Jan Paulo Cruz, boy letra, letra po letra. My friend Jojo Resuena, shout out to and God bless, is also watching. And Sister Maria Ritina, Sister Mento is watching. Pag-aralan mo Sister Tina, yung God died na katekisis, maganda yan. Medyo makapal, ubusin mo pag-aral para matutunan mo, maintindihan mo, ikaw mong social public. So, nandito na lang, let us close this with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, heart in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as this heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lord, bring us to the test of the last but evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is your fruit of the womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Son, and the Son, and the Son, and the Son. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fire of God. Lead us to stop, and especially those who demand us of the divine mercy. Lord, protect us from evil as we make the sign of the cross and also continue to shower us with your love, graces, and blessings as we make the sign of the cross in nomine patria with feelings of the Son of God. Amen. Goodbye. God bless. Happy Lord's Day. Magsimang laya no. Mga lawan. Share this live stream to your hosts, to your friends, to your chat boxes, messenger, and to our website.